Fury, Wilder was uncomfortable, jittery during face-off, trainer rescued him WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury believes Deontay Wilder did the smart thing by remaining quiet during their kickoff press conference last month in Los Angeles. The two boxers came together to announce their trilogy fight, which is scheduled for July 24 at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Fury dominated and stopped. Wilder in seven rounds in their February 2020 rematch. In the aftermath, Wilder had a variety of reasons for the outcome, including a claim that his ringwalk costume was too heavy and tired out his legs by the time the fight started. He also made allegations that Fury loaded his gloves with egg weights. If Wilder would have spoken, Fury would have been all over him on the past statements. Regarding the costume and gloves, he didn't really make me feel anything, Fury told reporter Gareth Davies. I thought it was a very clever move from Wilder, he's not the most articulate person in the world but he did something where he couldn't be asked questions for the things he'd said. If he'd come into the press conference answering questions, the first thing the press would have done is tear him apart about the costume and the drugs in his water. How do you answer those questions? Taking a vow of silence is probably the best thing he could have done. At the end of the presser, Fury and Wilder engaged in a long face-off that lasted for several minutes. Eventually it came to an end when Wilder turned around and left with his team members. We were standing there, Fury said. It was his choice to stand and not turn away for a minute or two and all of a sudden he was feeling uncomfortable and jittery. I could see he was twitching a little bit and stuff. His trainer came over and rescued him. All he did was touch his shoulder and said that'll do now, and he was so happy to be rescued. If you're going to go to the point of not looking away for 5 minutes and 40, seconds, why give away the moral victory straight away like Fury is correct. It was a smart move for Deontay Wilder. If you have nothing to prove your case with, or if you don't want to get involved with the questions that will be answered, or questions that will be raised while bringing this thing up, that's what Deontay Wilder didn't want to face because although Deontay Wilder has settled on one final excuse, he cheated his gloves. You cannot escape the fact that you had three, four, five, six other excuses before you settled on the glove because before then it's Mark Breland's fault. It's the coach's fault. Somebody was in your camp. Somebody spiked your water. You didn't train. Your outfit wore your legs out. Tyson Fury wore egg weights. Uh, you were poisoned going into the fight. He's made too many excuses to the point it forced him to be silent at the press conference because Deontay Wilder cannot talk himself out of a brown paper bag. So therefore, his team knew that his words was going to further incriminate him and get him in trouble. Now, with all the excuses that Deontay Wilder made, yes, a lot of that is bullshit. Do I think everything that Deontay Wilder has said between his match and Tyson Fury is false? No, I don't. I know that there's a little element of truth. No matter how big the margarine, is a little element in truth in what Deontay Wilder said. And why would you not believe that before you get a whole bunch of Tyson Fury fans quick to rebuttal? Why would you refuse that when nobody would refuse me if I said that Deontay Wilder and his team cheated Tyson Fury in the first fight? That's not far fetched for nobody to believe. OK, so it shouldn't be far fetched if somebody going into a second fight knowing damn well he was cheated on the first fight. Do you think he would go into that fight thinking he wouldn't get cheated again? Would you put things into play to facilitate a win or something like that? Yes. And then you also have his sparring partners, Nicholas Asbury. You also have Ben Davison claiming we took the we took the um, the padding out of Tyson's glove to give him confidence. Nobody wants to double back on Ben Davison and ask him these questions. OK, but one thing's for sure, all the excuses that Deontay Wilder had was bullshit. OK, 
But whether you believe in a glove gate and whether you don't, it doesn't matter at this point. Because like I told people before, even if this stuff is real, they will never speak on it. Do you guys not remember me telling you that? You could never uncover this. You can never really find out, find out what's going on. You never can. Leonard Ellaby was given a chance to shed light on this, and even he backed down from it. They, they simply asked him, Leonard, is it a stretch of what Deontay Wilder is talking about? Does any of this stuff possible that it'll happen in boxing? Leonard Ellaby did not want to answer even that. He didn't have to go deep into what Wilder said or even to Tyson Fury. The interviewer just wanted to know, is the things that Deontay Wilder is talking about, are those possible in boxing? And Leonard Ellaby didn't even want to confirm because he know the sport of boxing is dirty and he know that it's possible. But all together as a collective, the boxing world can't let you know that stuff like this goes on. But everybody knows this kind of shit goes on. Just look at Margarito. You know what I'm saying? Look at um, look at uh, Panama Lewis. You know, and it's no doubt the shit like this goes on. This is why Floyd was very thorough in checking people's gloves. Because he already knew all the ins and outs and the tricks and the dirty tricks to get used on you. But nonetheless, we are here now. And Deontay Wilder had an opportunity to address all those things that he felt strongly about. Now, this is the thing. Some of you Wilder fans look at Deontay Wilder like he's the next great, I don't know, black leader or something. And you guys say because he's not afraid to speak up about social issues. I praise Deontay Wilder for that. That is accurate. He is not afraid. But if Deontay Wilder was all those things that you claim that he was and was like a Muhammad Ali, so to speak, some of you say. This is one thing I have to ask you. Do you think Muhammad Ali would make all those accusations and then get an opportunity to stand in front of the man and to the world to address it and make it clear and so people can understand and not only understand, he could basically confront in front of the whole world the man who so-called did all these dirty things to you, do you think Ali would have sit up there and been silent? Do you think that? What if Ali would have sat up there and been silent? No, he just spoke his piece and you know that. So maybe Wilder ain't this vocal, upright, black fist in the air, political, uh, uh, a boxing God that y'all say he is. Because... How could you not be man enough to address when you have been done wrong? These are just the simple things that I bring up that maybe most of you don't think about. But nonetheless, the third fight is here. Okay, so there's nothing you can do about what's going on in the past. Nobody's saying anything about Tyson Fury getting cheated out the first fight. Just like nobody's saying anything about any cheating that may have happened on in the second fight. This third fight is going to be the equalizer. I told you before, Deontay Wilder's revenge is only going to come inside the ring. I know you guys have heard me say this before. All this stuff is stuff that I've said before. So at the end of the day, you need to quit worrying about whether this happened or that happened. You need to worry, is this man ready right now? When he steps in that ring, are we going to hear some excuses if he lose? Same and vice versa with Tyson Fury. Because I'm at the point now where we're in an era where these guys will make an excuse for any damn thing. I'm sick of it. Boxing is one of the most fair matches out there. I'm not talking about the sport. Fair matches. Mano y mano, man against man. The best man wins. The one that's not best loses. It's clear cut over with. There's no excuses. There's no, oh, he didn't have his protein shake before he went to the fight. Oh, he stayed up last night drinking. Oh, this, this, and that. Oh, he had the flu. Oh, he just broke up with his wife. His kid just died. We don't want to hear that. At the end of the day, when you step in that ring, you throw all excuses to the side. Because if you win, we don't hear excuses. Well, I don't want to hear excuses when people lose. Bruce Vane.